The Unify ecosystem has changed a lot over the years. For example, these older cameras that we've now deployed at many clients, and clients may go, well, I see new features on other systems. Do I have to run around replacing all these cameras? No, Ubiquiti came up with the AI port that adds enhanced functionality to existing cameras. Other companies have always asked, well, I want to switch to Ubiquiti, but I already have a lot of these cameras that work quite well. And I'm using an Amcrest right here as an example. This is tied to the Ubiquiti system and working fine. There is not a time when I ever thought Ubiquiti would actually allow support for third-party cameras. And not just support, back to this little AI port here, this AI port can be used to enhance features that this device doesn't have. Or you can mix and match. You can have some of your old cameras, some of these old cameras that are from Ubiquiti, and you can do things like the AI turret. This is more enhancements that they have, and they've got a wide variety of cameras that are still compatible with the same NVR. So that's what this video is about today, is talking about the overall ecosystem, where Ubiquiti is, and where I think they're going, because they've come a long way. They've added a lot of features. This is not sponsored or endorsed by Ubiquiti, but this is sponsored by our friends at Micro Center, a great place to get your Ubiquiti equipment. At Micro Center, you can pick up a few cameras, a Unify NVR, and then go from there and buy, well, all the other Unify stuff that you might want, such as access points, switches, or you can start building out your full rack. From small Raspberry Pi projects to full-on racing simulator builds, Micro Center has an amazing array of tech and their helpful store staff will help you find it all. We thank them for sponsoring this video. Now, before we get to where Unify is now with the MVR platform, let's talk about where they started. And that goes all the way back to 2014 with the self-hosted and Linux-based system called Unify Video. I really like this system. I had built several for our clients with lots of cameras, and I think there's some love and hate that came with it back then. I never seen any official guides from Ubiquiti to say for this many cameras, you should exactly have this processor and these drives and achieve this write speed and these IOPS in order to do it. There's a lot of specking that goes into this to try to make sure that the number of cameras and the volume of data you want to store and how fast you'd like that data to be accessed if someone wants to review a video, you have to put a server together properly that can support it. We were doing consulting even then, and we'd run into people contacting us for problems they have with their NVR, and we'd find them putting too many cameras and too small of a system. Essentially, they would underspec it both in processor and memory, and of course, in hard drives. They may have a drive capable of storing the retention they were looking for, but it couldn't handle that many drives writing, and of course, looking up those videos afterwards were just a nightmare for the people. So I think that's where Unify decided to start building their own system called Protect. That launched actually in 2018, and they didn't discontinue the Unify video platform until January of 2021. Now, this transition left you kind of wanting because it took a while for devices, the NVR devices to come out that could support some of the larger installs that I had built. So this made me a little bit ah, not loving Ubiquiti for a while, but the good news is they kept supporting the cameras. And matter of fact, I'm still running some of the older cameras and we've swapped people out to the more modern Protect NVR system that we use today. So I think it was a painful transition, but it's a uh, lessons learned and at least they kept supporting the cameras. So not having to swap the cameras made it a little bit easier to swallow and upgrade and do the migration. Now let's talk about where Protect is here in December of 2024. I want to be very clear on this. It does not require a cloud registration in order to work. You can buy these devices, you can set them up with the Protect, with the different models they have, and it does not have to reach out to any type of cloud. All the processing is done locally, all of the video is stored locally, and even the registration of the software or the setup, if you will, does not require a internet connection to their cloud in order to get it set up. Now, you may point out that wasn't there a time in the past that this was true, it did require it? Yes, the earlier models of the Dream Machine, they did have a requirement that was later removed. And the Dream Machine is among the devices depending on which model you get, that do support running the Protect software. That's actually probably a good place to start is the video recorders themselves. Now you can get all the different model video recorders and these are the ones currently available here in December of 2024, the Enterprise NVR, UNVR Pro, UNVR Standard, and the Cloud Key. But also there's a line of the Dream Machines that have storage on them that do offer support and a couple other models that have support for running 
the Protect software. Now the Protect software is very limited on those models, but if you only had one or two cameras or maybe a doorbell you want to integrate, those would probably work fine. Matter of fact, they've done a good job here on letting you know just how many cameras will run. So as you're planning your layout of what you want for cameras and storage, you can pick the NVR, and for example, if we wanted to have 70 4K cameras, well, the Enterprise NVR is the one for you. If you wanted 24 4K cameras, the UNVR Pro, and it goes down the line. Now, they do have stacking options on the larger NVRs, so if you have a requirement of more than 70 4K cameras, well, you can stack several NVRs together. This is a really nice feature. It's not supported in all the lower end models, but the larger ones, if you have a very large scaled out deployment, that absolutely is a great option. Now let's talk about the different camera options. I'm not going to go through all of these. There are reviews. I will link to some of them that have already been done, and I'll be doing some reviews in the future, but they do have a wide variety of cameras, including, and I think this one's pretty neat, these AI360 cameras. They have several dome models. The newest release is the AI turret camera, and I've done a video talking about the use of these cameras in some of the commercial settings that we've deployed them in, and I'm excited as more and more of them keep coming out. Having a wide variety of cameras helps a lot, of course, because not every camera fits it's every situation. So these fit a lot of situations, but you can then also have the bullet cameras and they have some really unique ones for license plate tracking, which a lot of people are really interested in, especially if you're doing things like you want to build trigger events, which we'll get to the software in a moment, but these are options where you can identify cue license plates and then build statistics and data off of this. I really think this is a nice enhanced feature. They're getting on par with a lot of more advanced systems and they're doing it all by putting the processing in the camera to do this. This is an important aspect to consider. The specking you do when you purchase an NVR frequently is me asking clients, well, what is your future plans? Not your now plans. I need to know what you are going to do in the future so we don't have to sell you another NVR that has the extra features. And that makes it a lot more expensive. The Unify NVR line is a little bit less expensive because they've moved all the processing from the NVR to the cameras. So if you just need non enhanced cameras that just record the video, well, they have less expensive ones for that. If you have needs for advanced license plate recognition, feature enhancements such as the object detection, that's all done in the camera. This means we don't have to scale up the NVR to match the demand on the video. It's kind of the opposite. We just add the cameras and the cameras do all the heavy lifting of processing that video to bring all that data analytics over to the NVR. I think this is really clever from an ecosystem design because well, as I said, it makes it so you don't have to build a massive NVR to support features. It also makes it easier to add features later because you have a new camera that will still work with the older NVR that has those enhanced features. And that brings us over here to the special devices such as the AI port. This is really clever because the AI port now allows you to add features that didn't exist to other cameras. I think this is something that's really a nice upgrade for people who need it. And you can buy as many as you need because maybe not all of them that you need, or if they were to build this in an MVR, for example, you would have to replace your entire MVR. If you had a couple of cameras that you'd like to have some enhancements with, well, this is where that comes in. Combine that again with the fact that they finally, and as I said in the beginning of the video, is a surprise to me, have decided to support third party cameras. This is a really interesting and really exciting thing for people who are on the fence about switching to Ubiquiti because now you don't have to. And this is obviously a big expense with companies that already have, let's say, 10, 15 cameras installed and you want to quote them cameras to enhance their system. That also would mean ripping out their old one. Well, that becomes a much bigger project. Being able to kind of ease into the transition where you go, well, we have these other third-party cameras they support OMVIF, so they should work with Ubiquiti. I've tested them with Amcrest, and I was even surprised to learn that Ubiquiti can control the optical zoom in the Amcrest camera. Uh, Ubiquiti is shown, and there's a lot of people who have tested them with a lot of Hikvision, which are another popular camera, but this obviously makes the transition a lot easier. And to go further, Unify has added a few sensors that do temperature, humidity, door and window state sensing, ambient light, and alarm sound sensing. Now, this is the dashboard of my Unify Protect 5-point run running in my lab. I have a couple different cameras, the AI360, the turret camera, and of course the Amcrest camera. The third party support is something I wanted to test. And I'm actually, as I said, quite impressed with it, even the fact that it can control the zoom. 
The camera capacity is shown right here on the side, so you know the status of the MVR without having to dig for it. So if that's all the way filled up, well, it's time to get a new MVR before you add more cameras. The video archiving. This is a feature that was really important in the early days of the Unify Protect was not available. And of course, for companies that have compliance requirements or how long they have to keep videos, this became a blocker for installing Ubiquity. This is a feature that I'm happy that they have, and they have the ability with the video archiving for Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, and of course, a NAS, maybe even a Unify NAS, but it's not required or locked in. You can choose a NAS of your choice and put the IP username password in and be able to set that up. Then we have detections. This is nice, so we're not trying to search through video. We can start with what are we trying to detect? We're trying to find a vehicle, a person, maybe even audio, and then build from there to try and find what the event is that we're looking for. Playback is simple. We can choose the camera we want to see. It notices and will track the different objects that you tell it to highlight here. There's not any vehicles in my uh, studio here, so it's only detecting me walking around. We can also jump through the detections instead of a timeline of video and scroll through it this way. I've moved that camera around a couple different places and we can then go a step further to say, let's look at the detections, find people detections, and it will recognize people and we're able to tag them. So there's me getting up out of my chair and I can also go over here to recognition, find my son, and it will find videos where Arcus was at. So I can pull it up and it jumps right to this video where he came in my office or jumps right to this video when the camera was sitting on the bench behind me. Go a step further and this is a feature I think is really great, the case manager. The case manager lets you build out a case essentially. And what a case is, is when you have a series of detections, you're trying to solve the mystery of what happened and it happened maybe across several cameras with several different people instead of making a series of notes to what happened and figuring out all the timestamps, you can use the different detection options to start adding each video to a case. So you start a new case, you add all the videos and all the evidence, and then you can have it download the case. It'll create a PDF with a series of screenshots in there. And of course, all the video files can be downloaded at the same time. So you have one large file that says, here's all the evidence you need to put together the information around the event that happened from all the different angles, all the different cameras, and each of them you're able to put notes in there. So I said, Marcus came into my office, and I can also just put it here, Marcus came to my office, and it'll have all the timestamps on there. And I'll show you what the PDF looks like by clicking download. It downloads as a zip file that contains each of the videos. The timestamps are in there. And of course, this is the PDF with any of the notes I had for each one of these. So making it really easy to turn this over to someone if you need to. I went ahead and asked the Unified Chatbot if the cameras were NDA compliant and it seemed to be unable to reply. But if you do some searching, you'll land on a forum post that has a comment that says reach out to Ubiquity if you need an updated list of compliant cameras with a link of probably an older list. I didn't find anything publicly available that Unify publishes, but as that forum post says, reach out to Ubiquity if that's a compliance requirement for a project you're working on to make sure you're not, well, out of compliance. Now, Unify has come a really long way since they released Unify Video in 2014 to where they are here in December of 2024 with Protect. But does it work for you is really the question. Let me know in the comments down below. Or if you want to have a more in-depth discussion about this or other topics, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com for a more in-depth discussion. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. And head over to lawrencesystems.com if you want to connect with me on the socials. And I'll see you online. Thanks.